yes. So today I want to go through some career content. Um, we'll first talk about resumes and cover letters. I want to just give a quick high, high level view of some of the things to mainly focus on. And if you're look, if you haven't watched the webinar from earlier this summer on resumes and cover letters, please do so. Um, but I can answer some questions today as well. Then we'll jump into an overview of LinkedIn, things to make sure to check out on your profile so you can kind of check the boxes and get going in your search. Um, I'll give you a snapshot of the search strategy for internships and for jobs, um, what we recommend that process should look like. And I'll get your Q&A after that as well. And then we'll go into interviewing tips and I'll talk a bit about virtual interviewing as well. Um, and I'll show you how to send a calendar invite for your informational interviews if you haven't been able to do that yet or if you don't know how to do that um, to get on somebody's calendar. So let's start first with a high level view of resume highlights. So I've pared down my advice to six of the most important areas of your resume to focus on. And the first is to make sure your bullet points are results oriented. Um, the diagram below that I'll walk through now, it outlines the parts that should be addressed in each bullet and um, how to address them in each bullet. So the first one is your skill. You want to start with a really strong action verb. And then the second part of your bullet addresses the what. You know, you did this action for what um, in just a short but descriptive way. Then you want to identify the tools or how you completed that task followed by the results, which addresses the who, um, your purpose, the greater impact that you've had on something. So if any meeting you come into me with for a resume edit, just know I'm going to ask you, what was your impact? What was your accomplishment? And that particular area really allows you to explore some more transferable skills, whether you worked in that industry that you're interested in or not, you will be able to speak their language of that new area you want to work in. So next, I want you to remember to be clear and consistent in your formatting. Um, that's a really easy visual check to go through on your own. I'm happy to do it as well. Um, making sure your headings look the same for each section. Your titles should be formatted the same way as well. Um, your dates and locations should look the same and be consistently in the same spot for each experience. Make sure they're, the dates are right aligned and aligned in the same fashion. Um, that attention to detail translates really well to recruiters and hiring managers. It's so much better to show that you're detail oriented as opposed to just saying that you are. And if that's not a strength of yours, that's why you have me as a career coach to go through and be that other eyes review to make sure that you're presenting yourself um, consistently and in a um, detailed way. You wanna make it easy for the recruiter and the employer to find what they're looking for. So that's another benefit of having a really clean, consistent format. And then I want you to make sure you list your experiences in each section in reverse chronological order. So that means your most recent experience, the one that you're currently doing maybe first and work your way backwards. Then I want you to make sure your contact information includes your full name, your email address, your phone number, your location, which is now Washington, DC, um, and potentially your shortened LinkedIn URL, which I walked through in the webinar on LinkedIn, how to edit your URL in your privacy settings. Then I want to we'll make sure that you list your education section first. Um, being in a master's program, I think there's many benefits to listing your education section first now if you weren't before. Um, so I, I highly recommend that. I think once you get to about five years out, you could feel comfortable moving that education section um, below your professional experience. But for, for the next five years, let's say, education section is going to be listed first. And as always, approach your resume from the perspective of highlighting your transferable skills. So those are those come out in the forms of the skills that you're writing um, in action verb form. But if you take the process of thinking about what the recruiter or the hiring manager is looking for and then seeing how you can describe your experience in, in maybe their words or in their way, 
that will that's a way to highlight some of the transferable skills from another position and still speak the language of the new place that you're looking for. Cover letter. So here's a snapshot of your cover letter. I want you to focus on crafting a letter that highlights three to four skills that are relevant to the position you're applying to. How do you think you and your experience can contribute to the organization? And why should they hire you? You wanna make sure to customize each letter for the company and the job you're applying to. Mention why you are interested in the organization, why they should be interested in you, and how you found them, referencing anyone you have spoken to. So if you had an informational interview or you were able to reach out to somebody um, prior to applying, I'll talk about this in our job search process snapshot, um, but make sure the cover in the cover letter you're referencing if you, if you know somebody at that organization. That goes a really long way. The cover letter typically consists of three parts, an intro, a body, and a conclusion. And I want you to remember to address the letter to somebody specific, if possible. And if you can't find their specific name, whether it's on LinkedIn or on their website or by emailing the, emailing the company and asking, um, then you can write Dear Hiring Manager. Um, don't write to whom it may concern. Um, it's an outdated practice. So Dear Hiring Manager or the name of the person you're actually addressing the letter to. And Bill has shared with you a format and template for both the resume and the cover letter that we recommend you follow. Um, it is expected that you'll have a MSB formatted resume. Um, and then I just highly recommend using the cover letter one as well. It's just the formal cover letter template. So for submitting your application, I wanted to throw this in here just as a reminder um, to submit, first of all, follow the directions the company says to how to submit your application and follow it to a T. And then I want you to remember if you are submitting your resume in email format, you want to definitely submit it in a PDF and title that document with your last name, your first name, and the title of what that document is. So if it's resume, say resume. PDF. And when you're submitting by email, the subject, subject line should be short to the point and include your name and the position that you're applying to. Um, the, all, the body of the letter should be a condensed version of your cover letter. So sometimes a company won't require a cover letter, but you're submitting your application by email. They're going to use that body of the email and whatever you say as that supplemental cover letter without asking for a formal letter. So you want to make sure you hit the job position that you're applying to, the name of the person, again, that you connected with or know, why you're an ideal candidate, and a closing statement with your email signature. And your email signature should include your full name and your contact information. The more you can get your full name and contact information around in front of them, there's less of a chance they're gonna lose it and they'll know exactly how to reach out to you. Any questions on resumes and cover letters? You can use the raise your hand function or just speak out. I think I can see you guys here in the corner. Is everyone feeling good on their resumes and cover letters so far? I have a question. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Chris. Okay. Okay. Um, in terms of restating your resume on your cover letter, would you advise against restating specific projects or experiences that you have on there, but just explaining your skills you got from it in, the, in a different way or, or would you suggest getting just having different experiences all together? So it's going to be very difficult. You want to highlight experiences that you have on your resume. The cover letter is a space for you to expand upon them and give it a, maybe a little more color, a little more detail that you weren't able to write on your resume. So it's definitely okay to reference things that you've already been able to put on your resume. Just make sure you're not just reiterating the bullet points that are listed there, but giving a story and maybe more of an example behind how you cultivated those skills and what, how did that experience bring you to apply to this new job? 
So if you, any time you can tie it back to this, why you're here, why you're applying, why this company, that will allow you to kind of give more details, more tailored details for that specific application. Okay. Good question. Anyone else on resumes and cover letters? Okay. Moving right along. So let's see, here we go. So this is a snapshot of your LinkedIn profile and what you should make sure to have to have a complete profile. And the reason we really push for a complete profile is the more complete your profile, the more likely you have keywords in there that are going to attract recruiters and the more likely your profile will be seen and people will request to connect with you. If you don't have a complete pre a complete profile, it's it's um kind of a turn off for recruiters and sometimes you don't come up in, in their searches even when they're actively looking for you. So on the back end on the recruiter side of a LinkedIn platform, they have their own special login. They type in keywords and profiles of people come up based on those keywords. So this is a 10 step snapshot of how to make your profile most complete. And in our LinkedIn webinar this summer, we talked about writing your headline, which is number one here on their list. Um, you can be as, we talked about how to be a little bit more detailed, a little more keyword focused in your headline. And remember, LinkedIn is still a working document. As much as you go through this program, you're going to find out more things about yourself and more of what you're interested in. And you can always tweak your headline as you go. Um, but for now, um, look at, uh, I would watch the webinar that we talked about and workshop your headline a bit. And if you want anybody to review it or give you feedback, you can definitely connect with me on LinkedIn and I'm happy to, to give you guys some feedback. Make sure you have also a professional photo. We will find time, whether it's in orientation or outside of orientation to take a professional headshot for you. Um, the third, you wanna definitely show off your education on both your undergrad and your grad degree now. Um, you can also include high school on here. I do not recommend putting high school on your resume, but if, uh, if you were um, putting your high school on LinkedIn, there's a chance that you can connect with other people who've graduated from your high school before, and that could be an interesting, um, soft, warm outreach to somebody is, oh, we went to the same high school. Um, developing a professional summary, this is your about section, is really important for keyword development on your LinkedIn profile. So I highly recommend you take some time, put some thought into it. I think a lot of the information that you, or the story that you share in your cover letter could be put into your summary. So you can do double duty there. It doesn't take too much, not too much more time than it would take to write a cover letter. Then you wanna update your status regularly, just post updates, stay connected to people. Um, we'll talk in my class on career strategy about setting goals for yourself, not just the long-term goals or the short-term short goals because it's eight months to get a job, but how are you going to get there? How many connections do you plan or want to make per week? And um, we'll help, I'll help keep track with that as your career coach. Um, we're very goal-oriented in career coaching. Show your connectedness. This is ju jumping into groups. Um, then you want to collect diverse recommendations. Once you have a complete profile and you're connecting with colleagues and in your internship or past jobs, you can ask people for recommendations on LinkedIn. On the back end for recruiters, they see these and it's looked at very positively. So once you get to that point, we'll talk about, um, I can help you craft messages to ask for recommendations from certain people you used to work with. And then you want to tailor your LinkedIn URL, which we also walked through. It's if you go to edit your profile in the top right part of that edit page should be a chance to edit your URL if you haven't already. Then you can add it to your resume, to your signature, um, and uh, probably a bunch of other places <laughs> that you're out and about. It's easier to share your shortened just your name URL. And then just make sure to share your work. If you have examples of projects or writing that you've done, um, graphic design, maybe you put some flyers together for an event that shows your creativity and marketing ability. Um, think about some of those things that might contribute to your new interests and could be put together in a portfolio 
um, but definitely share it on LinkedIn. There's a project section where you can upload your documents. So that's a 10 step snapshot for LinkedIn. And here's a snapshot of what we recommend for your search strategy and LinkedIn is involved in this as well. The first step to applying is to search the platforms listed below to find opportunities. So we recommend LinkedIn, Handshake, which is the university's um, platform, Parker Dewey, which is the project-based work experiences, um, also partnered with the university. Indeed is a really large job platform where you'll find a ton of opportunities. It could be very overwhelming, um, but it does have a lot out there. Idealist is for nonprofits, and Brad Traverse was one just recommended by your new accounting professor, actually. Um, so that's just DC-based jobs. So if you are looking for this area, that one is highly recommended from your accounting professor. So the next step would be, once you find that opportunity, we want you to go to the company website. I've seen this work many times for um, students in the program and clients I've had in the past. Um, if you find an opportunity posted on LinkedIn or Handshake somewhere else, always research the company website webpage and check if that opportunity is posted there. So for internships, I would prioritize um, maybe applying through Handshake and LinkedIn since Handshake is curated opportunities specific for Catholic youth students most of the time on there. Um, and LinkedIn, you can get that connection and make more of a conversation as opposed to you know, you can create an internship when you talk to somebody sometimes instead of just applying to something formally. But for full-time jobs, I would definitely prioritize applying to the job through the website or Handshake first before applying through LinkedIn and, and other job platforms. So I would go website, Handshake, LinkedIn, and then any other job platforms. So after you go to the company website, you want to first connect with two, at least two people from that company. And when you connect with them and they accept your request, whether that's on LinkedIn or, you know, it's a family friend or somebody else that you know outside of LinkedIn, you want to ask that connection for an informational interview. And in the interviewing workshop that we did, we talked a, a good amount about what informational interviewing is, how to do it effectively, um, so this is where this fits in the process, is you connect with two people and you ask them for an informational interview. This interview is conducted by you and it focuses on learning about the person, their role, and obtaining more information about the company culture. Things that you can't just find on a website. You want a leg up in your application. You want the inside scoop. You're going to get it from an informational interview. Then you submit your application. I know you're probably like, wait a second, that's right. I didn't even apply to the job yet. And all, the, all of this has happened. So I recommend this as step five because you can then reference the, con the connection you've made in that informational interview conversation in your cover letter, in your application when you're reaching out. And it really helps you stand out from the rest of the candidates applying because it already shows you put time into it and that you went out of your way to meet with somebody. Now I have a little asterisk here because there is an exception. So when the deadline is really tight, say you find the opportunity and the due date is tomorrow, or you know the opportunity has been posted for over a week, you wanna make sure to submit the application prior to connecting with two people, but still connect with two people from the company after you've applied. So that number five could be number three in the process, um, but hopefully you'll be able to have a conversation before you apply. And then finally, follow-up is the last stage of this application process step um, process. So you wanna follow up with your connection, make sure you tell them you applied and thank them for their insight. And then you also wanna follow up on the status of your application. One and a half to two weeks seems like an average um, that following up, even if you haven't heard anything, following up in that time frame is acceptable. Um, just make sure that if during the application process you see they're collecting applications until X date, that you give them until that date and then a week and a half after that to follow up. Um, most likely they'll just wait and review applications once they've received all of them.
but general rule of thumb, give it a week and a half, um, and then you can definitely follow up and ask about the status of your application. So that's the job search strategy application process. Now, I wanted to just walk you through a series of screenshots here of how to set a calendar invite when you are, when you do schedule an informational interview with somebody, whether it's through LinkedIn or not. So when you go to your calendar view in your CUA email address or any Google account, I'm just doing it from, from Google for now because I know you all have it, you want to click um, the time slot that you're looking to make a meeting and this will pop up. Then you want to make sure you put the title of what you're asking for. So informational interview colon your name and the person's name that you want to speak with or that you want to interview. And then you want to make sure to add video conferencing. I highly recommend um, requesting a Zoom meeting and not just a phone call. It gives you that face-to-face. -face. It's a lot easier to build a connection when you see somebody face-to-face, face-to-face -face, um, -face through Zoom. <laughs> so a Zoom meeting, I recommend you could use Google Meet, but most employers are on the Zoom platform. Not everybody has Gmail. So after you click that, it will auto-populate a Zoom meeting link for you. And you want to make sure here in the description section, add description or attachments, that you just put a little reminder of what you want to speak about. You know, informational interview regarding XYZ position, regarding your role, um, something that they can remember what they're actually going to speak with you about. Then you want to make sure to add guests. So in this add guest column, you type in their email address, click enter, it will populate it here. And you can have them modify the event, invite others and see guest lists. That's up to you, the kind of permissions you would like to share. I like to give all the permissions. And then click save. And this little box down here will pop up if you would like to send them an invitation email and you definitely want to click send so that they get it in their email and can accept your invitation. So once, when the meeting is, I guess, live, you will go into your calendar and click it and click on that same Zoom link. Um, since you are the host of it, you may need to allow the person in, um, but otherwise it should be pretty seamless from there. You have the same, the same links. So what questions do you guys have on LinkedIn and internship job search strategy? Mary when do you let go of an opportunity like three weeks or something like that after, in I guess modern term, you've been ghosted? You haven't heard anything? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I would give it a fair two, time, two times of following up. So that week and a half time frame and another week and a half. Um, I would follow up twice and then be respectful and just move on. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. If you have not been able to connect with somebody yet, though, and you still haven't heard anything, do your due diligence to try to connect with somebody there, and they may be able to give you some more insight on why the process is taking long or if they've chosen another, another candidate. Good question. Anyone else? I know I'm going through these quickly, so... Feel free to pause or stop me anytime. Okay, let's move, let's move on. Okay, so for, in, for interviewing, we talked about the STAR method. And the STAR method stands for situation, task, action, result. We recommend using the STAR method in answering behavioral interview questions. So what are these questions, right? It's tell me about a time when, describe a situation where, um, and a lot of times they're looking for you to point towards past experience to demonstrate a skill or something that you can contribute in this new environment. So STAR is something I definitely want you all to remember, <laughs> which is why I'm highlighting it here for interviews. Um, it's a really great tool to explain your story and set an example without rambling, give enough detail, 
and hopefully create conversation where it's not just a 20 question interview, but they could ask a follow up from the story that you've shared and you create dialogue. So in the, in the um, previous webinar, I went through some examples and things, and we'll definitely talk about interviewing in my class this fall as well and practice crafting star answers for various behavioral questions. Um, but I wanted to give you guys this snapshot now as you may be interviewing for internships soon. And then virtual interviewing, I wanted to share some high level what to expect and what to, or how to prepare. So you first want to make sure you test your technology just as you do now for these webinars, um, same situation. Then you want to make sure you set the scene, have minimal distractions in the background, make sure you're not doing it on your phone, do it on a hard surface, um, you know, sit down prepared. And that means preparing your technology, but also preparing your star answers and research on the company and their background, just as you would for an in-person interview. Even if the interview, the, the video interview is a phone screen or something very preliminary where they want to go through your resume and just check the boxes, sit down very prepared because they'll want to know what you know about them. And then practice. You don't need to memorize, but it helps to practice just to gain your confidence, to see what you look like through the screen when you make eye contact with the camera, or if you're making eye contact with the bottom left of my screen, you can see the difference in both body language and um, connect connections, how we're, how we're connecting. I don't know if you guys can actually see me with my screen, but if you can see me, I'm looking directly at the camera. So you don't need to memorize, but preparing those star answers, you'll have them in the back pocket. So if they're asking about your leadership experience, you have an example that you know is going to demonstrate your leadership experience really well. Expectations wise for virtual interviewing is still to dress business professionally. So um, that means a suit jacket goes a really long way. Um, ladies, we have a little more flexibility, but guys make sure to wear your button down shirt and a suit jacket or a button down shirt and tie and a suit jacket, depending on the, um, the culture of the organization you're interviewing with. It's always better to dress up than to dress down. Professional background, that means something clear, not distracting, um, proper lighting, make sure the light is coming from, you're facing the light instead of the light coming from behind you so that they can see your face. <laughs> if it's coming from behind you, your face will look very dark and it's very difficult to see your facial expressions. So have the light face your face and then angle the camera where it's almost at eye level and you can talk directly into the camera. If you have the camera angle down like this, you might only see my eyes. <laughs> if you have it down really low, you might not see anything. So make sure that angle of the camera elevated on, a book, uh, on some textbooks or something to get to as close to eye level as possible. It will help you with posture as well and um, those subconscious cues of confidence. And then make sure to smile, look into the camera, like I mentioned, and project your voice as much as possible. Sometimes technology is wonky and that's okay. Everybody deals with it and we move through it. Um, but if you're projecting your voice and not mumbling and giving that eye contact, you'll be able to engage your audience much better. Questions on interviewing. Yeah, Carly, I saw your hand raise. Um, when is it appropriate to log on to like the link they sent you? Like how early should you be if it's just like clicking the link? Great question, because usually in person, once we get back to in person, you want to be at least 15 minutes early. That's a, that's a really good point you brought up. For those, I would say at least five minutes early. A lot of times they will, you'll have to wait until the hosts, host lets you into the meeting, just like you did now. So they may wait and let you in at the exactly the time, but at least you're there and you're prepared in case they can start early or if they're looking for you to be there early, um, at least five minutes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Great question. What other questions do you have? And this is open floor now. It doesn't have to just be about internships or anything like that. Um, let me stop sharing my screen. There we go. So I, I do want to open the floor and I know Sue's here to answer other questions as well. Um, but career prep wise and internship searching wise, 
Um, how are we feeling? Where are you at? What else can I do to help you feel more confident in the search process? Maybe some of the students, Mary Kate, can share any um, experiences they've had so far in, in contacting people about internships. Have you had any interviews? Uh, what's comfortable? What's uncomfortable? Et cetera. We'd love to hear about your experiences yeah. so far. Definitely. Thanks, too. That's a great idea. Who wants to start? I'm happy to cold call. <laughs> We're gonna have to get used to volunteering, Stu, right? Because yes, yes, cold calling. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to avoid the cold calling if you can, but uh, but Chris is ready to start. Great. Um, there's not another Chris here, is there? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. I just received an email today, actually, when I, when I got up this morning from um, a company I applied to, Feedback Labs, and they told me that I didn't, that they couldn't offer me a position, but I was considering in my head asking for an informational interview, but then I just decided to ask if they could email or call me if they are willing to, to talk about how I could better, like how I could improve an application in the future. Um, but now I feel like maybe I should have asked for an informational interview. <laughs> so. Yeah, if any time, and maybe it doesn't need to be a full informational interview if you've already applied and, and been rejected for lack of a better word, but if you want feedback, on your application, you can definitely ask for that after every time somebody gives you, somebody tells you what the status is. Um, whether it's, I think giving them a context and something quick to apply to, you're more likely to get a response instead of having them call you for a long conversation. That call should be on you. So what you could say in an, in an email is, um, thank you for your time and your consideration. Um, I hope to keep in touch. Is there anything particular about my resume or my background? You know, give them a little bit of context that um, you would have liked to see in my application so I can improve upon that. And um, sometimes they'll res they won't respond and that's okay, but asking for that, there's no harm in doing that. Okay. Thanks for sharing, Chris. You're always voluntold as like the first person in things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. It's good for me to get thrown out into the, yeah, into the. Would anybody else like to share? Uh, this is Lionel. Um, <laughs> just to go off of what Chris, uh, off of uh, Chris's story. Uh, what if, um, well, you get rejected by a company and then a similar position open up maybe two months later and is it okay? Can you just reapply or apply for that similar position or knowing that you applied already, uh, uh, to, to this company and uh, what are your chances to get the position if you apply for this position two months later? Yeah, great question. I think a strategy to help would be to first get that feedback from them as to why you weren't accepted in the first place. <laughs> so you know what gaps you may need to fill when you apply next time. Um, but short answer, yes, you could always reapply and try again and go through the process. That's totally acceptable and, and people do do that. I think to have a better chance of making it through the second time, um, understanding your gaps from the first application, talking to more people at the organization, making sure you're a good fit um, with them as well. Um, those two pieces go a really long way. Um, also, hopefully two months later, you maybe have another experience to add to your resume instead of just keeping the same exact application. So you can definitely Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can share. Um, so I I started ap applying and getting all my all my ducks in a row. Like I think it was mid June, July, and I applied to a couple of things. And um, 
and I, I thankfully I heard back from a lot of them um, and they were like we just we don't have anything for the um, for the fall just yet everything was still in the summertime so I've kind of give been giving it a break these past two weeks because I've also been on vacation with my family um, but I'm about to follow up again with one of the companies that I had a really good interview with um, he seemed really excited and, and like enthusiastic about having someone on board for the fall and he's like let's like back up um, as fall starts approaching so I think right now that's where I'm at um, and actually I would love some pointers on that as well um, but yeah that's kind of where I'm at right now but I'm I'm ready to like again start like furiously like applying and searching again it's something I was doing that and then I think I got a little discouraged when a lot of things weren't available just yet for the fall um, um, thank you for sharing yeah. that though I mean it's a really great testament to actually starting early regardless of the opportunities being ready for you yeah because you're able to follow up more seamlessly their process hopefully will, they're happy because it will go quicker they already met you <laughs> and they yeah. don't need to start from scratch so I am glad you started. I'm sorry you felt discouraged, but oh, it okay. will pay off <laughs> yeah, yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I'm also just looking for anything new as well. Like, cause I think my goal is to be in the Northern Virginia area, like rest in Tyson's. I'm not quite um, ready to be in the DC area just yet. Cause with my commute, it makes more sense for me to be in like Tyson's or rest in. So well, that's um, a good, that's really good actually for you. There's a lot of opportunity in Tyson's. So yeah. You'll, um, you'll fare well. I, and I don't, I yeah. forget when we talked, Valerie, of your interests, but there's a huge tech sales hub there. So I know that they are actively hiring and recruiting people. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, mean, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting. I think right now is this coming week is about the right time. I think people are starting to be like, okay, let's start thinking about fall. Now. <laughs> awesome. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Who else wants to share or ask a question? No, no one ready yet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, this is a good problem to have, Stu. Maybe they, they know everything. Maybe we did a really good job this summer on our webinars. <laughs> well, first of all, I, I think you and Dan have done a very good job this summer. And, uh, and I thank you both for the effort you put into this because it's something we hadn't tried before. And I, I think it's been a good experience. And I think it's something we'll do from now on to help people get ready. Uh, Valeria made a really good point. Their internships come at certain times, and it's it's great to be prepared. It's great to start contacting people. It shows you're proactive and and interested. But companies are you know they have a schedule too, and and they'll know when they're ready for that. So uh, don't be discouraged by that. And, and I think August. Uh, got to, it, it feels so early uh, because it's still early August and typically we're having this discussion uh, about two weeks later. So keep at it. Um, uh, I think to Lionel's point, if, if, you, if you applied to something and didn't get it, apply again to the next thing that comes by. It shows the company you're interested. It may even be somebody else that's uh, looking at the applications. So. Uh, I will guarantee you one thing, if you don't apply, you're 100% sure not to get it. So what's the downside? You know, the, 